back to another exciting episode. Today we will be having a conversation with Miss Evelyn Maruping. So before we have this conversation and before I ask her how she's doing, I just want to I just want to get this off my chest. Evelyn, Friday you had on the jacket. Saturday there you had on the jacket and I see today you have on the same jacket. You mean the coat? <laughs> the coat. Not the jacket. What is up with this coat, Evelyn? Well, this coat um I am um, I am proud and I'm excited to actually say it is my own design. Um, for two years, I was on a TV show and that feeling of wearing, being dressed by a designer, it kind of grew on me and I was like, I want me, I want the touch of me on my own body. So um, this is actually uh, my very first design. I am not a designer, but I am a creative person. And I believe when you're creative, you can put together anything. So I had this idea in my mind um, that I didn't want like, you know, um, when you wear it, when you, when you, when you uh, go to like a glamorous event and whatever. So I wanted something glamorous and something that screams Evelyn. But it looks stunning. On Thank you, you. To be honest. Thank you. So let's go. Give it miss now today. We don't want to be. It's Evelyn Maruping. It's my friend, my everything, my business, but not my business partner, but a person that I normally speak business. We have business chats, né? So today we're just gonna have a chat, girl. We don't want to make it so formal and safe, and you know, let's chat with the people. Yes. Are you ready? It's. it's I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Me. So. Evelyn, a lot of people know my portion of what I'm doing. And um, let's hear what... And, uh, uh, man means again with egg doing. But a lot of people, most of the people know what you're doing. But can you put everything together and bucket it in one bucket? Ne? And share a bit about your background and how you got started in your business. Actually, uh, uh, uh a very interesting question that you're asking me at the right time. Um, this morning I was in a class and it was about marketing and branding, personal branding and business branding. And they, uh, there was a breakdown of what is a personal brand, what is a corporate brand and what is your product. When you just have a product and nobody ever sees the face like with Coca-Cola, yeah. we still don't know what the person looks like. Yeah. Um, and then your corporate branding, um, what came to mind to my mind this morning was, you know, with, with Standard Bank or any bank, let me not mention a name, but with any bank, you have the bank, but they have different products. Yeah. Um, and I'm going somewhere with this. And then you have your personal brand where there is a face like myself. Ah. So this morning I was like, I'm like, I don't know, you know, sometimes it feels like I'm confusing my, my, my audience. Yeah. Um, or customers or clients because then I'm busy with a starlet, then it is a pink TV and then it is a every chick collection. But it is a very simple thing. Um, my company is called Maruping Media Productions. And under Maruping Media Productions, we have skills development. We have um, broadcasting and distribution. We have local content development. And then we have events but not like your uh, f uh, festival or a music event or like most of the times it's like a business event like uh, the networking breakfast chat yeah. we hosted last year with the premier so under Maruping Media Productions you will find all the different um, services yeah. that we render yeah. and they all speak to storytelling so whether I am producing a show so of course we will have different shows so yeah. people must not be confused I am not doing too many things um, it is just the umbrella and then we're constantly working on different projects okay. because we need to develop most different projects yeah. when it comes to me as Evelyn I have a talk show that also falls under content development um, in broadcasting as Evelyn, um, so there is a business brand and there is a personal brand. Yeah. And somebody once said to me that um, you can't have two brands. It needs to be aligned. But yeah. that is not true. Because you're, yes, you are the business. Um, and we see it now more and more. 
that more CEOs and managing directors are coming to and founders, we see more of them now because they are the face of their business. Yeah. So um, people must not get confused. I am everything that you see in my business. Thank you very much, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, clearly somebody asked some, said something. But anyway, okay, when your mother or your family at home, nah, how do they describe what, what do you do for a living? What, how do they describe your business? That is a very, that is a funny one actually because um, my mother, for example, um, she will always tell me that, I, I don't know what it is that you do. I just know it has to do with TV and whatever, but I don't really know what it is that you do, but she is very supportive. Um, my sisters, they kind of like, like they are never surprised when I'm doing something new. Um, but when they describe me, they will always say like, and everybody says the same thing, not just my family, but my friends as well. Yo, you are very busy. Yeah. You are always busy. And my, what are you busy with? Mm. I'm always busy with something new. Yeah. Yesterday somebody said to me, you know, every week when I come sit in your office, ne, you're showing me something different. I'm like, you know what? Now we are out here and um, the entertainment industry and the creative industry it is a challenging one. And it is 20 times difficult in a province um, where we don't have a television and a film industry. Mm -hmm. We are still building a television and a film industry. So I constantly go back to the drawing board and ask myself, what is it that you can do to also generate income? doing like with another project or something so once in a while i do the network breakfast sometimes i do a talk show like um once um i did a talk show for standard bank SA. now i'm you know thinking of putting this beautiful garment on the market yeah. and make some money okay so i don't know about that but i, I quickly want to go back with regards to you, uh, with regards to what you explained to earlier, you spoke about um, your business. You explained the, the different segments and sectors and whatever functions and stuff within the uh, MMP. Um, MMP is standing for what now again? Maruping Media Productions. Mother, Ma Maruping <laughs> Media Productions. <laughs> but anyway, it is the mother company. You absolutely <laughs> right. So, Evelyn. Um, there was one thing that I read. You know, as I studied marketing, yes. and though people yes. so, but I, I did study marketing. Trust you, man. So there's one thing that I read uh, in one of my textbooks. Uh, you spoke about Coke earlier. Um, it's a big brand that we we not they're not paying for this segment or whatever or episode. So, um, but I want to speak about it. That um, when Coke started, ne, they only started with Coke. And they wanted people to get used to Coke before they uh, um, made the, the different types of the other brands like Fanta or, or the other stuff that we now drink, um, Fanta and all the other stuff. So don't you think, I don't want to give advice or anything, but for people that really, you say Mensa is getting confused, that, that all the stuff that you're currently doing, there are projects under Maruping Media. But don't you think sometimes we're actually having a lot of companies under one company without even knowing that? Um, we're just uh, um, trying to um, convince ourselves that it's, everything is under one, it's like under um, an umbrella, but it's different things. But I mean, if, you talk, if you're talking about your coat, your jacket, it's something totally different about storytelling. We can push it into storytelling. Oh, definitely, it's a story, girl. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, we can push it into storytelling, but if we really, really honest, it's a, it's a different direction, and, 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 and not something that we're not saying you mustn't go into because you're looking so stunning. I mean, you would, I mean, we can't wait for the next coat or the next whatever dress because this your first piece is already amazing. It looks amazing. And I mean, you wearing it and you, I think you are making this thing. Or is, uh, or is the coat making you? We both, com we we both complimenting, complimenting each, each other. other. Okay, awesome. So Evelyn, if you now, 
this is a conversation. This is not me just here asking you questions. So I just want, from your perspective, if you, you know we no normally chat about everything. Um, what is the one word or one of the words that I use the most in our conversation? The one word? <laughs> one of the words. You Goodness. Um, in your business though. Listen, <laughs> that is the word you use the most because every except time you call me to order, you're like, listen. <laughs> except, except the word listen. Branding. But with regards to business, when I really, when I start to become serious and uh, when we, we gossip about other people's brands and businesses. You use the word now, brand. Branding <laughs> is the word you always, always okay. use. Okay, so she's saying I use the word branding, but that is true because there was one time somebody also told me that um, that I use the word brand a lot. But there's another word that, I also, that I'm going to say that I, that I always use or that um, when people speak about my company, it's, it's uh, except business health and stuff, uh, administration. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> I always speak about how a mess um, other com like not most of our companies, our admin is a mess, you understand. So I, let's, when, I speak, when I say the word administration, what comes to your mind? You, um, what comes to my mind is, um, it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I think I have a lot of work. It sounds like something that I don't want to do that because I want to be out there and create. So if I may ask, do you, as a small, I don't, I don't like people calling myself, I know I'm a small business owner, but you as a small business, né? With, we had COVID and it a lot of things happened throughout this two years and uh, this past three years uh, since 2019. There's a lot of things that happened. I know 2019 we were still running around. We wanted to go to Australia and stuff. And, and just stuff happened. Life happened. So what I want to ask you is uh, on that topic of administration, um, do you think, what do you think? I know you say it's a lot of work, but is it actually very important in a company Yo, it is so important because um if your admin foundation eh, if it's not like solid it can make or break your company like let me make an example um let's take finance for example financial administration like if you don't know what's happening financially admin wise um, keeping all your receipts, uh, making sure that there's a bookkeeping system in place, making sure that um, you have financial audits and that everything is just, you, know, like you, you, you have systems and processes in place to monitor the financial um, aspects of your business, like when there's money coming in and money going out and um, what, for example, um, <laughs> what is needed and what is not needed, you know. Um, so, fi fi administration is, I think fi administration is the key thing because it is like marketing. You can have the best product, but if nobody sees it and nobody knows about it, then what's the point of having yeah. a product? Administration, the same. If your administration is not on point, you will be dear Makar. And I must be very honest because this is what now we've been real here. Yes. I must be very honest. Like, I feel I just had a meeting with somebody now and I said to the person, I don't have time to get involved with your project because my time management is out. <laughs> nee, I don't have, I, 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 I feel like, every, like, I feel like my, like everything is managing me instead of me managing because I don't have systems and processes in place and it starts with administration. I love you because you're speaking my language. You're speaking time management, you're speaking systems, you're speaking processes and all. That's my kind of stuff. Because, so you say that stuff in your business, is that in order? No, it's not. Like, Lemo Art must please come <laughs> and like, like do like what, uh, 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 um, what do you call it? Uh, not analysis. But take me to the theater. Yeah. And fix MMP. You know, it's a, there's no problem fixing. Um, and it's nice. Uh, Limo Art uh, works with people that want to be fixed because um, it makes our job easier to go into the theater because um, you're actually saying, listen, I want to be fixed. Um, but it's difficult to work with people that. Um, 
that think that everything is in order and it's okay to work, uh, to just juggle all the balls and stuff like that. So let's get back to um, the greatest lesson. What lesson did you learn, uh, your greatest lesson that you learned so far in, from your life now? What's the greatest lesson? Business or my life in general? Okay, let's say business um, and then we come to your life. Um, the greatest lesson that I learned, to be honest, is that um, your time and your energy is the greatest investment in your business and your business will always, always require that. I think that's the second great, uh, um, 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 greatest lesson mm. I've learned. But the other lesson that I really learned is um, to just give you a little a bit of a background. When I started out, I would do things for free. I would undercharge. I will never pay myself. Um, I will. I, my heart was like I just want to help people, and then I realized, but you're running your business like a charity. This is not a charity; it's a business. Yeah. And then I started taking myself serious, and when I started to take myself serious, not that other people never took me serious, but financially, um, people started taking me serious as well. Because um, if if I I mean, we can do things at our own discretion, you know, voluntary, but I'm not there yet to be able to say, I can do this for free. Yeah. I'm not there yet, guys. I must still make money. Yeah. I just want to ask you one question. Are you a ma one-man show or do you have um, employees? I wear all the hats. I Don't mind the <laughs> pony. But I wear all the hats and uh, I feel drained. I am overwhelmed i sometimes i feel like i, I just can't deal uh, i do have a very loyal colleague who works with me and she's been with me since 2017 whether there's money or no money and it doesn't matter what it is if i say i'm doing this she's like how high how high must i jump okay but it's still a lot there's one question before we go for an ad break there's one question i would like to ask you um it, it's an, a question that somebody asked me recently what is an entrepreneur um i'm still self-employed let me start there it's something i <laughs> i also learned i i call myself an entrepreneur but i'm still self-employed yeah. an entrepreneur is somebody um who can they can remove themselves from the business and the business can run on its own and i learned this from dr tabo pizzi let me not take credit for somebody else's words and yeah. intellect so if you're still working in your business you are self-employed okay so yes and this person um i agree with you most of the time we're working we self-employed and thinking we're actually running businesses then you actually slave of somebody else again you know but um this person said that um an, an, an entrepreneur that's so a big word a word that i normally struggle to say but then you see that it's it's somebody making money like i'm in the business making money is your business making money because listen i don't see it that's why i mean likes can almost all of you that what mark evelyn maga is the business actually making money so before the ad break coach lahora okay to be to be very honest, Ney, um, when I started in 2015, I was not full-time in the business. 2017, I went into the business full-time. So what I do is, I am, like I said, I'm in the creative space. So I started with videography. And I came to Kimberley. And um, it was on and off. Like, then you get a project this month. And after six months, you get another project. And by the time you get to the end of the year to do your, like, to look at the um, revenue or your profits, there is no profit. Yeah. There is still no profit. Yeah. It's still everything that we get. Are you in making dollars? Like, are you I'm making not money? making the dollar yet. So people, please, like, sure. yes, it looks like a million dollar code. <laughs> but don't think I've got millions of rands in my account. But I can confidently say I am well on my way there because of all the lessons I've learned. And now just building um, on them. Okay. So... Um, okay, thank you for that answer. It's actually a great answer. But I would like to continue with this, um, with that 
after the break. So we're quickly going to go for an ad break. See you just now. Welcome back to our second segment with Evelyn Maruping. Um, and Evelyn, we will continue where you left off. We spoke about, <laughs> about you making a dollar. But anyway, we are in business of, um, we want to make money. Ne? And um, you just said to me, somebody's coming to me and he's going to propose something. And there's no money. And you know, most, I don't speak to people that can't pay. I don't do business with people that can't pay because our because we want to grow and if we can if we don't have money and, and our businesses don't make money how will we grow our businesses as it is when so um, what advice would you give to younger business owners regarding uh being i think you've learned we've not just you we've learned lessons that we've we've been doing work for free i think you spoke about it earlier on, we're doing work for free sometimes and sometimes we feel it's our friend let me just go shoot and the one thing that I like about you is there was a time in your life you said I'm not even doing matric photos I'm not doing funerals or whatever this or stuff. Wedding. weddings yeah all the stuff they just it's a lot of work and they don't pay and that is that's a good thing that I mean that's a good point do you say a good point but I mean that was one of the decisions that you had to make as a business owner. But what advice would you give somebody in our position with um, regards to making money? Because Evelyn, we are, we are so done with the rent. Mm. I'm very sorry for <laughs> whoever is watching. <laughs> we want the dollar. We want no. money from, from abroad. Like, can we just make money? And for those other people that know how we can make money abroad, Come sit on the chair where Evelyn is sitting. So that, come teach us. Because mm. we want to make money. Yeah. The one advice that I will definitely give to um, upcoming um, business owners or upcoming entrepreneurs. Um, stop trying to prove yourself. You have nothing to prove. Um, I went and I studied television and film. I still came back and I had to prove myself. Yes, you, you need to start somewhere. But I mean, when you go into business, you can't still prove yourself. You, I mean, you, it's business. Like when you make 10, uh, 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 um, when you, let's, let's use now some of the perfume line or some of this coat. I'm making this coat and I paid so much money for it. Ne, to, yeah. and, and I still want to give it away for free. As was malachidai. <laughs> so when you decide, the day when you decide to go into business, to become an entrepreneur, create, just get it out of your head. I almost spoke Afrikaans. Just get it out of your head. You are not in the business of proving yourself to anyone. Yeah. Stop doing that because you will forever prove yourself yeah. or try to prove yourself. Yeah. Um, your qualification speaks for itself. Your experience speaks for itself. Yeah. So don't go. If you still want to prove yourself, don't start a business. I like what you just said now. Um, you said... Your experience speaks for itself. Because in business, like, I believe that we're still learning a lot. Although you say we don't have to prove. I'm not proving to anybody anything. But obviously, when we go into a business, obviously, you, you want to render um, a perfect service. Like, you want to render good service. You want to actually give the client a solution to their problem. So, um, and if it's not the best solution, um, we, we will come back work, on another, work on another solution. But you're not going to prove you, you yourself. Know, yes, but just pay me for, for, for the, doing for what, what I what did. I did uh, according to what we have agreed upon. Exactly. Uh, because obviously before I, I work, we agreed upon something. Mm -hmm. So now I'm giving you what we agreed upon. And why do you come to me in the first place? Because yeah. you believe in what I can offer you. Yes. Or you believe in the service or I can do. Or maybe you just marketed yourself good for you, you know. Some something. people, yes. Yeah. But I believe people like ourselves, um, credibility is yeah. everything. People come to you because you have credibility. Yeah, I also believe that. And another thing is, there's one thing that, um, that I also want to highlight. You spoke about, we spoke about what now again? Um, the advice, the advice for upcoming. Yeah. But anyway, so I'll come back to that. Yeah, oh, uh, one thing 
that Evelyn just spoke about its experience and she spoke about uh, qualifications and she spoke about, yeah, she spoke about those stuff. Um, even with us, we've studied and stuff and I'm not, I'm not here to, I'm for education and I'm for people getting, like Evelyn, I think you, you have your honors degree or something. Yes. Going for your masters or something. Eh? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Like we're for studying and stuff. Uh, we're promoting people to study and, um, Go fetch your go 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 to university and get your degree, but for uh, there's a lot of things that I've learned um, through this five years of mine, like the short uh, in the short space of time, that um, if you do, if you can't show it, and even though you have the experience, I only to So the only way is to show them. Exactly. I can I can say a comments, and I think. Um, yes, I, yes, I want my honors and I want my doc, doctorate and all those stuff. But that's not the stuff that's going to make me. Um, experience also. You're, it, it, uh, I've got a friend that she is so a gevaarlijke, she's so gevaarlijk, nee, that when she speaks, when she opens her mouth, it's just, what do you call it? You can yell, man. Yeah, some people are just it, it. It it it's a gift. It's a natural skill. Yeah. Um, and nobody can teach you that. It's like going to like I always used to say to the people going to Africa to study acting. I'm like, Africa cannot teach you acting. It's either you have it or you don't. Yes. So it's the same thing in business. It's people they just have a skill. But when you go and you st and you study. Yeah. Um, we're not saying it's the alpha and the omega. Yeah. But when you go, it just adds a lot of credibility. credibility That's yeah. also also work on the credit. And there's also Especially even short South courses. Africa, exactly. There's short courses now. Um, there's a lot of things you can do because I know life is short. People don't want to go for safe study. short courses, they don't see that certificate. Eh? They want you to have that thing called something. Some PhD. like honors, a yeah. degree, yeah. PhD, Once master's. In a a diploma. Yes. But anyway, so um, I want to ask you something. And this is a very important uh, question that I want to ask you. Um, you, uh, you said earlier that you're a one man show. Um, I don't want to call it that, but let's call it what it is. A one man show with uh, a, a, a very loyal no, colleague. No, obviously, <laughs> uh, we know Deirdre is always with you, and and she's uh, yesterday, she's beyond loyal. I think she's one of the best. You, you don't even get people that's employed that, that dedicated. But one thing that um, that I want to speak about is, Evelyn, I believe you also want to leave a legacy to your children and your child. Can we say one child? One, <laughs> your child. <laughs> but I mean, in future, you're going to get married and you're going to have a lot more, 100 children. But I will share Yes. <laughs> but what I want to say is you want to leave a legacy, even for your family or just for somebody. Um, but... Can you agree? Everything, is every, all your stuff documented. Like, all is it in your corpus? All you the woman is it, is it is it actually on paper documented? Is there somebody that can just take over and run with with your current business? Yes, yes. That is the. It always starts on paper for me. It starts first in my head, and then I put it on paper. One thing I can say is yes, by gevaarlijk is it come by paper. I don't want to lie. You're very good and. Um, and I believe that's why you in storytelling because you love writing and um, not everybody documents stuff. Um, and, and you're also into detail when you document stuff. So I believe you when you say that there's a lot of people that um, you know, their stuff is in their head and they're walking and you know what can it's happen to you. And so if something happens to you, it's it's, clear. it's finished. Now, so we always uh, um, advocate or we always tell people that document your stuff, you understand, not just for, uh, for when you die or when something happens to you, but just for growth as well, for to give the pattern over, over to somebody else to, you understand, to run with it. So, come on, how we get a child? Not so ernstige questions. So, what is the best compliment that you've ever received? Did you really receive a compliment? Obviously, you always receive compliments. I'm always there when people say you look good and stuff. But what is the best one that you can say you've received so far? Yo, you are so right when you say I receive a lot of compliments. And shout out to all the people who 
take Pas note of lang us. Of Pas teri lang of you. Pas teri lang Yes. Um, yo, yo, Sharon, that is a difficult one, but okay. The best compliment, um, like I, I'm trying to think of something that even when you leave this earth, it's something that's relevant. Not, not, yeah, people always say I look good. Yeah. Um, the one compliment I always receive is, um, like I'm a, I'm a hard worker. I don't know if that's a compliment when <laughs> you're working hard. Is it a compliment? For me, if somebody tells me I'm working hard, it's it's a problem for me. Because, <laughs> yes. uh, so no, let's get you know that one. Ah, let's get that one. Later. Yeah, no, let's. Um, the best compliment, to be very honest, that I see receive um, from people who meet me for the very very first time in the first ten minutes is they always say um, you are s- inspirational. Yeah, that is. For me, even when I die, Not that is some good. Yes, or you're good looking or looking exactly. stunning. Exactly. So when I die, it's with substance. Yes, when I die, that will still live on. People will still speak um, of me and speak like uh, it means I will leave something behind that will still inspire people, even if it's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go there now. If you could be, if you if you could be remembered for one thing, what would that thing be? That I um, made an impact. In like what? Like, give me an example. For me, everything that I do with my content, um, every single thing that I that I do, it is to make an impact in somebody's life. I want somebody to, let's say, for example, watch an episode, and I want that person not just to be entertained or educated or get the knowledge. I want somebody to walk away and feel and and go and implement and transform themselves so i when i die one day and people must speak or whoever must speak on social media or at my funeral they must say um evelyn helped me to change one two three um about myself she helped me to change my life to be confident I don't want people to just say, yeah, she inspired me. I want them to say that she actually helped me to be confident, to be better, a better version of myself. A better version of yourself. So I don't, ju- I don't just ask questions. Like all the questions that I ask, it's, um, there's a reason why I'm asking a question. And um, I just want you to know that. So I know you're like that. <laughs> so um, I just want this one question that I want to know. Did you... Have any f- childhood fears, like when you were a child? Did you have any childhood fears? And are you currently over? Um, I was afraid of the dark. Are you still afraid of the dark? And though? I believed there was always ghost in the dark. But I overcame that fear. And actually when my father passed away in the house, so I was, that was actually the time I was, when I was supposed to be more afraid. So that fear made me afraid to like, what if I must travel one day and I must go sleep alone in a room or I must go sleep alone in a hotel room. Mm. And traveling actually also helped me a lot because so, I was forced to sleep alone in a hotel room in a guest house. But when my father passed away, that's actually when I overcame that fear. Okay. That was really the biggest fear. I don't think that there was is, anything else. No, nothing in business that like... No, I was but always yeah. no. I can't. Okay, like obviously, you, when you're a child, you like don't even yeah, think you don't think that, oh, far. that far. You just want the, a better life. Yes. So you're not afraid of you what's want happening. A better life here. for all. Yes. You you just want to <laughs> know like when I get into when I get to the future, it must be yeah a better life. So I want to ask you this question: If you could interview anyone, because um, people have this thing that okay, I'm gonna throw it out there. Can I throw it out there? I don't know what you want to throw out. <laughs> I don't know what you want to throw out. No, it's so nice having a mic, Mensa. I want to throw it out there. You, a person, uh, you've got your own uh, talk show, which is called Talking to Eve, ne? Um, and where you interview celebrities, and oh, obviously not just celebrities, but you know you can celebrities. And even if you don't know them, you, you just have that thing, man. You get them. Mm. I DM them. Yeah, you DM them. Yeah, I know you. So uh, people have this thing that um, I'm currently doing what you're doing. 
So oh, I like this. I like where this is going. <laughs> Can we just deal with that one once and for all? Okay, so we're not doing the same. Although we're chatting. Even if it was the same thing. And even, yeah, and even if it was the same thing. Can you please make that example again, the one that you gave me? Okay. So you asked the question first if there was anyone that I could interview. Oprah Winfrey. I, I, I wait, okay, that one, but you already asked. Yeah, me. Oprah Winfrey. But to answer your question. Um, I didn't even complete the question my question is if you could interview anyone from your life either loving or dead but not a celebrity ne, who, would, who would you choose and why my mother i would def i oh, definitely wow. want to interview my mother because you, know, you see now you're making me emotional <laughs> because um she has a story um that we need to tell it. It's my mother and my grandmother, actually. But, then when but you need definitely to do it, my mother. You need to do it as an ASAP girl. Why are you waiting? I don't know why I'm waiting because they're actually on the list. My grandmother already recently, she could not speak. She can speak now again. And I'm like, yo, there goes my story because she needs yeah. to tell me my story um, of the time when I had cancer. But definitely my mother. So if you... Okay, that's awesome. I think you need to do it ASAP. And then... We had that thing of, um, can you quickly explain to them <laughs> the story of uh, what I'm currently doing? And um, the, the thing is just, I don't, I'm not disclosing why we're doing it. Um, we actually want to help, we actually want to help businesses. Um, we actually want to help businesses. Yeah. And that is for growth purposes and marketing wise and just get your brand out there and also to in the conversation, we would like you, we will speak about time management. We just want to tell you, listen, you can't juggle all the balls. Mm. I think you need assistance. So we will not tell you that you need assistance, but we will hoi it in like, what do you think about it? Because we don't want to look like we want to overpower you on camera. So we will speak about time management. We will speak about systems mm. just to give you that like, what, why did Sharon ask me that question? Let me go and ask her maybe off camera and then we can have a, a professional or a chat where you pay me now and uh, we can continue the conversation. But there's reasons for every question. Uh, um, when we ask about, there was something, we sp spoke about time management, you spoke about, I spoke about documenting your, uh, your, your business and your, your ideas and stuff. Is it documented? Is it written down? Uh, do you have, uh, um, yeah, your goals and stuff, your long-term goals and short-term goals, is it written down? And I believe, as I said, you're a detailed type of person. But I want to go to this thing that we're not doing this, although we're having the same type of platform where we speak to different people, but we want to, we, we, we're reaching, we want to reach different type of goals. And not even that, even if we speak to the same people, we speak about different things. That's what I'm saying. It's different, yeah, we're touching on different things. Yeah, so, yeah, that's just one thing that I wanted to get out there that um, I don't want to be you, girl. Okay, can I just say this? Allow yeah. me to say this. I was just having a conversation with Puletao, and um, he looked at the coat, and he was saying to me, so why don't you sell it, and, and stuff like that. And we, we ended up going back to this conversation of when, some, when I'm doing something and you're doing it, it's like, copying someone yeah and that is our biggest problem yeah um i'm not gonna say in which race group or whatever yeah but i mean sharon this is like you always say to me no i'm not you this is your talk show this is your platform why not god gifted you differently and me differently yeah you are touching diff something different even if you were touching the same thing i mean oprah winfrey ellen um trevor noah Ricky Lake, uh, Dr. Phil, they can all interview the same person, but they can even ask the same questions. I mean, last year they interviewed Tusum Bedu, and they were asking her the same questions on all their shows. So what is wrong with that? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, why can't you have a talk show? I have a talk show. It Maya has a talk show. Mark has a talk show. And we celebrate each other. Yeah. I can have the best guest and say, hey, Sharon, I think this is somebody you should talk to. But you know, because I picked up on this thing that speaks to what you're touching yeah. on. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that one in there because I, uh, uh, um, I don't want people to think, you know, because we still want to be there for you and we still want to market and yourself. And for each other. Yeah. 
Um, so thank you so much. I, I actually enjoyed this um, this set this segment, uh, our segment because it was I, we could be real, we could ask the real questions, knowing that um, it's a little, sometimes it's a little bit personal, uh, and I know I can touch a little bit personal because um, it's not that personal. Like we we always speak about this yeah. stuff, and yes, there's things that we didn't touch on that's personal, personal. But we just wanted to keep this segment very real. And we trust that at my and his team, the production team will not cut certain things because we will add it back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this segment. Thank you, Evelyn, for Thanks just for coming. Me. You're looking fabulous as always. And um, thank you for, because you're just a call away. You're always a call away. And it means a lot to us. It means a lot to me. Uh, people won't understand it. Uh, they will come up with a lot of things. But um, honestly, you mean a lot to me and to the business. Vice versa. <laughs> so thank you and we out.